I will be very brief and short. My name is Lisbeth Svengenholm. I'm professor in design management and newly also becoming director of the business and design lab at Gothenburg University. When I started to um, look at the development of design field, it's obvious that it's changing. And we were so pleased that we could invite Professor Ezio Mancini from um, Politecnico di Milano, but also professor at University of Arts in London and uh, Jiantong in China, etc., etc., who is re has written a really interesting book about this subject, introducing design to uh, to social innovation. If I have only a flyer of the book, it's there, and you can also ask questions afterwards. But I'm very happy to that you are here and going to present your work. So. Thank Please, you. The floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Lisbeth, and thank you to everybody. Um, you have to be really professional to talk in this kind of condition, but I will do my best. And um, I also think that uh, given that we are in a book fair, uh, the best thing to do here is really to talk directly of the book and uh, to try to convince you that you cannot live without this book. So you have to run. Unfortunately, not here, because it's not physically here, but you have to run to your computer and uh, to go to MIT Press and say, urgently send me a book. No, I'm joking. But um, this book is important for me because uh, it's a result of research that I did with uh, several group of uh, colleagues uh, in Milano mainly, but uh, also in many other places in the world, around uh, how we can uh, put together social innovation, that is a word that is uh, very used today and is spreading and is, there are good reasons for that, and design. And design, as uh, probably you know, is uh, today something quite different from what we have imagined uh, one century ago. So to make this uh, navigation clearer, or to try to, I produce this kind of uh, map that is a navigation tool that put together all the different concepts that are included in the book. As you can see, there are something related to the multiple crises in which we are, that is in some way the driver of the motivation to do, at least for me, but probably also for you. At the same time, on the other side, on the right uh, up, there is the issue about sustainability, that is where we hope to go and we need to go if we want to have a future. But the book is not uh, talking specifically about the crisis or specifically about uh, sustainable society, but as I anticipated, it's trying to put together what we can recognize when we talk about social innovation with what uh, design intended as uh, the design of this uh, 21th century can do. So let's start very shortly following also how the book is organized, the social innovation issue. Uh, all the social innovation, you know, is whatever kind of innovation that do not start in a technical scientific laboratory, but start in some way into the society and afterward evolve and change the society. Me and many people as me are very interested to a part of this social innovation that I call local discontinuity a local discontinuity means a small group of people that start to do something that was not obvious before. So it's typically a bottom-up innovation with a radical attitude. So to do something that has not been uh, foreseen in the mainstream. And uh, even in, unfortunately, in this moment in the world, we have uh, so many bad news, and we have to be aware of that, Luckily, there are also some good news. And the good news is that in the same moment, there are millions of people around the world that are doing something, as I said before, some way of doing, some way of being, that are not obvious, that are organizing their life or part of their life in a different way. In, um, I'm following this topic in the last uh, 12 years but probably more than that, there have been hundreds of different solutions that appear, that have been invented by people. I will not read all of them. I, I'm sure that nowadays you recognize what I'm talking about. 
what they have in common is that they are a solution. If we talk as a designer, they are solution ideas. So they are a way to solve some problems. And this is important. Therefore, some of them is capable to solve some problem that otherwise will be very difficult to solve. I mentioned only one that gives the idea. How to deal with the aging population in many parts of the planet cannot be solved with a very traditional idea of a service. Therefore, if you have a social innovation, some invention that in some way consider the elderly people not as a problem but as a part of the solution and activate and create collaborative uh, actions in between the elderly and, uh, for instance, the young people, you can have that uh, what was a problem could become an opportunity. And many of them have this kind of characteristics. So their radicality is such that they permit to change the rule of the game and to make things in a totally different way. But what is really, for me, very interesting is that they do not only get a certain result, as, for instance, solving a problem to take care of some elderly people in a more active way, but the way in which they do it have a kind of a sub-product that is sociability. So they create social link. They are based on a form of collaboration that while you get a result, the main result, they have also the result of creating the possibility to increase the fabric, the quality of the social fabric. So they have a second very important product that if we at the time should be discussed. So it's a kind of social capital or common goods that is realized thanks to this kind of initiatives. This is why for me and for who thinks as me, this kind of innovation can be seen not only as a solution of the problem of today, but also a kind of anticipation of how a sustainable way of doing and being could be. And this is, in my view, why they are so important. Assumed that uh, my few words are not enough to explain, but at least to give the flavor of the idea of what I'm talking about, if it's really so important, the question that we have raised is, uh, and so what for the designer? So what the designer can do? And so we have to move to the second pillar of the book. The one pillar is uh, social innovation and the description of this kind of social innovation. And the second one is uh, design and how design is changing. I said before the design of the 21st century is very far from the design of the, 20, of the 20th century. And if you go in a bookshop, probably also here, you find so many books about design that are putting together design with a different kind of object. So it's not only the traditional product design or graphic design, but you have design of policy, design of social transformation, designs for change. So you s recognize that design can be an operator, an agent, to intervene in very complex issues, as the one, for instance, that we were treating before. So if we think about design for social innovation, we have to be capable to update our idea about design. So not to think design as we thought uh, one, cent no, one century ago in the last century, but to think design as it is appearing to be today. That is uh, design, uh, strategic design, service design, design organization, design for policy, all this kind of application of a mentality, an approach, a culture to design. Therefore, when I talk about design for social innovation, it is not a new discipline of design. So it's not that as we have had the product design, the graphic design, and now we, and afterward the survey design, the strategic design, that are disciplines of design. Design for social innovation is not a new discipline of design. It's a way, a direction in which you apply design. So the, until now, the design has mainly looked to this technical innovation to find new solution. And so in some way, design has been seen as a kind of humanizer of uh, wild uh, technologies. And you could be whatever kind of designer to do this. Now it's the same, but the bridge is drawn in the opposite way. So you look to the society, you try to recognize something that is happening in the society. 
and afterward you see in which way you can trigger new of this initiative, support them and make easier for them to be reproduced and to last in time and to be more access accessible. Therefore, you can be whatever kind of designer, even though, for me, the core is service design. So the majority of these initiatives are some form of a organization in which people have some service interaction. But it could be communication design, a lot of this. It could be interaction design. It could be, for sure, strategic design. Sometimes you can also have some product that promote and support some social innovation. Therefore, I was uh, in my map, I was trying to show uh, that uh, it could, uh, depending on what is the moment in relation to some social innovation, what design can do. So for instance, there are some colleagues that work in design for social innovation as a kind of design activist. That means uh, the designer is uh, active, makes something happen, a, a little bit as he was a political activist, but using the design tools. But when you have already have some community, you can work with the community. And so there is a lot of uh, action that can be done to uh, help the community that are starting to do something interesting to proceed in the co-design process in a better way, in a more software, in a more productive way. And afterward, when you have the communities and when you have already something that is happening, it's necessary to create an environment that could be positive to have so many different initiatives happen, a kind of positive ecosystem that make it possible. And therefore, there is an ecosystem and there is something that can be done for the community. That means acting on this ecosystem to create more favorable conditions for new initiatives to happen. And finally, and for me, very importantly, so it's finally simply because it's the final one in this uh, uh, over, overview that we have given of the different way of being a designer, is all the cultural dimension. So the designer can participate to this kind of social uh, movement, let's call it, uh, also bringing and reinforcing what are the new culture that is needed to imagine how all this bottom-up initiative can find a frame, a vision of the world. And this is really very challenging. And I will most, more or less, I uh, know. So there, to explain what we can do, there are uh, several design uh, methods and tools that has been already developed. So there are the one related mostly when you work with a community that could be related to exploring, visualizing, prototyping, enabling, communicating, connecting. So this is a kind of help that the designer can bring to a community. There could be the design for the community that means how to help a good idea to be replicated, how to create synergies between different ones and so on and so forth. Afterwards, you can, as I said, work to promote ecosystems that are more favorable. And so you can create an environment where there is more diffuse creativity entrepreneurship. Therefore, the people are more able to do, to propose something new. Or uh, to create space the hubs or similar space in which it's most possible that uh, people start to organize uh, this new kind of uh, social entrepreneurship. Or you can create an infrastructure that uh, could uh, help different groups to connect together, and so on and so forth. So I try to say there are specific tools related to when you work with the community as a member of the community when you work for the community, a specific community, to support a certain idea, and when you work to support, uh, uh, to improve the ecosystem, the environment in which many different of this idea can develop. But as I said before, there is also a cultural dimension that is particularly, for me, important and not so much discussed until now. And in the book, we try to start at least the discussion. 
And this, uh, what is a very specific that some design expert can bring? So why we are designer and not a social worker or not a expert in other kind of uh, discipline and technology? And in my view, there is a new culture that we have to help to promote. And the question is uh, where this new culture come from? And uh, the proposal that I, that I do is that uh, this new culture that could keep together so many different things start uh, in the same social innovation. And as a matter of fact, I don't, really don't have the time to do it, but if you look at all these cases, you can observe that they are not only getting a result, not only creating socialization, but they are also starting to have new ideas, for instance, of time. Normally, they ask to slow down a little bit. For places, they really are rooted somewhere. They reconsider work, and so there is a, a higher evaluation of the quality of work. And in general, they have a quality of relationships. And um, I think that these ideas, for instance, that we can see in the social innovation can be recognized by the designers and uh, they could be the building block of a new culture. And this new culture could permit to develop a new narrative because we desperately need a narrative to get up from uh, the no, from the block at the street in which we are. And uh, the positive, and this is the conclusion, is that probably they could permit to build an idea of prosperity that is a prosperity that could be uh, followed as the dream of uh, 7, 9, 11 billion people and not the idea of prosperity that we have had until now. Read the book and you can find all the questions that you can have. In any case, I will be here if you want to talk. I'm very happy to do it. Thank you.